Dog Day Afternoon, first requested to me by Otto Cristoforiti and directed by Sidney Lumet, is a 1975 crime drama film based on a true story that stars Al Pacino as Sonny Warshick. Sonny and his friend Sal attempt to rob a local bank in order to obtain a certain amount of funds for a certain reason. However, this bank robbery doesn't go as planned, and before long, a hostage situation emerges once the police arrive on scene. The situation continues to get drawn out as the media coverage expands, and the hostage situation lengthens, and before long, Sonny realizes realizes he and his friend Sal are in way over their heads. As the situation worsens, Sonny attempts to figure out an exit strategy. All right, so Dog Day Afternoon was another film that I wasn't too familiar with. And this is a big reason that I love doing these requests because it broadens my horizons and allows me to watch older films that I probably wouldn't have otherwise. This request is definitely another winner though overall because for a movie that was released in 1975, it holds up very well. I liked this movie a lot because it felt real suspenseful. It felt like there were a lot of twists and turns along the way as this hostage situation played itself out. There are a lot of scenes where you feel like, yeah, this is probably the next logical step for this type of hostage bank robbery situation. And the police probably would try to do that or do this or whatever. And the robbers probably would try to demand this or that. And in that way, I feel like the film had a lot of gritty realism to it, especially in the way the media actually cover the story and of course, the way the police try to negotiate with the criminals. It felt very realistic in a lot of ways, which makes sense considering it's based on a true story. And man, is Al Pacino good in this role. He absolutely steals the show here, just like he did for me in Godfather 2, honestly. Al Pacino just has a unique way of showing a variety of emotions at once, a sort of conflicted nature that's fundamentally present within the characters himself that I've seen him in. And in this specific film, he gets progressively more distraught as he digs himself into a deeper and deeper hole with this bank robbery. And it's important to remember that there is a reason he chooses to rob this bank. He does it for a specific reason, and he always maintains that he's doing what he needs to do, not what he wants to do. And it puts the audience in an interesting position, because Sonny becomes sort of an anti-hero in a way, a character that does bad things, but for good reasons. There's an interesting bank robbery that takes place here, because Sonny isn't all that cruel towards the hostages. He's concerned about how they're feeling, he makes sure they have what they need in order to feel at least mildly comfortable, I'd say, and he's probably the most thoughtful and polite bank robber I've ever seen in a movie. And what's interesting about that approach is it makes you empathize and sympathize with Sonny because he's a war veteran that finds himself in a unique predicament financially. There's no job that pay enough to survive and he feels like he's doing what he needs to do in order to survive. And as you learn more about him, you start to begin to wish that he'll actually get away with this and get away safely. At least I did. I like how the movie is morally complex because there's a lot of different ways to interpret Sonny's actions. And I like that how, although you'll likely empathize with his situation at some point, you're probably not ever going to fully agree with his actions of robbing the bank. It's very likely you won't. But it's cool how you understand him as a character and how he's properly motivated with a backstory that adds layers to him. Like I said, I found myself rooting for things to work out for him. I didn't want anyone to get hurt, obviously, but I was becoming increasingly invested in a situation that just devolves very, very quickly. This is a very bare bones story that focuses on a few characters and two or three primary storylines. All those storylines work well, but I think that just watching how the hostage situation evolves was the most entertaining part of the film. Because as the story gets more coverage and more people start to show up to this hostage situation, negotiations start to get more tense with the police as well, and the whole thing just becomes a circus. The conflict feels like it grows in exposure and scale with each passing scene, which to me honestly is a sign of great pacing and great writing. Most of this film's strengths do lie in the narrative itself and of course Al Pacino's performance, but I think it's a plus that it all holds up remarkably well 40 years later. I mean, this movie came out 40 plus years ago, and there wasn't really a single time where I felt like the experience felt dated. I didn't see any awkward shots, I didn't see any audio dubbing, none of that stuff. This is a film that you can turn on today and watch without having to wind back the clock in your mind back to the 70s. You can engage yourself by adapting to the setting in which the story takes place, but it doesn't require you to lower your expectations simply because of the release date, which is a great sign. Something else that works great in this film is that there's no actual score to it. There's some songs heard in the background of some scenes, but there's no actual music composed for and incorporated within the movie itself. This is a no country for old men style approach, and I think it actually adds a greater sense of realism overall because it makes things more tense and it makes them feel more real and it actually helps create an atmosphere that's more immersive as a whole. There's only really one thing I didn't love about this movie and this is absolutely not an objectively negative thing here. I get it's based on a true story and it's just sort of a subjective read opinion kind of deal. The ending was only slightly satisfying for me. 
It certainly ends in a way that makes sense, but I felt overall that it was a little anticlimactic. I wanted more than what I got ultimately, because it all happens so suddenly without much build up to satisfy the anticipation that you're feeling based upon what you've seen so far. And again, this may just be me and I get it's a true story, but it wasn't my favorite ending. But let's take a look at the pros cons as we wrap up. As for the pros, I thought the story was gritty, grounded, and felt ultra realistic because it's based on a true story, obviously. Al Pacino delivered an absolutely amazing performance. The tension and suspense were at high levels, and the movie holds up extremely well nearly 40 plus years later. As for the cons, just the ending for me. But again, it's just my personal feelings on the matter you may feel differently. I'm gonna give Dog Day Afternoon a 9.5 out of 10 and definitely recommend you check Check it out if you're looking for a gritty crime drama. This one is a great option if so. So have you guys seen Dog Day Afternoon? What did you think of it? And if not, let me know why not. And also let me know your favorite Al Pacino movie. For me, it's probably Godfather 2, but in all honesty, I haven't seen all of his films yet. So that's something I probably need to get on. But either way, this is Wolf Oxification signing off. See you in the next review.